here I am. My C3 load. Give me a second. I will be with you. Oh, just falls down again. Anyway, hello all of you early birds who have come in for the first few minutes. Just going to give it till about 10 past the hour just to let people roll in. But yeah, welcome to the VDL finals. We'll be starting off with the VDL S. This is my second time doing the task for the, for the VDL and sadly I didn't get as far in VDL as I did last time. So, you know, the taste will be a bit bittersweet, but gonna stay neutral as a caster. Gonna try and make sure that I'm not not you know, a bit too stingy. I did I did face one of the finalists in another draft league today. Blah blah. Yesterday, I, yesterday. well there we are. We're on Tuesday. Yeah, on, yeah. So yesterday I faced another one and uh, got stomped. Got completely stomped. Uh, I I played sloppily and got stomped. But maybe we're going to see a similar style of play in the finals. Don't know. Uh, but yeah, as I said, wait until about ten past the hour, then I'll get rolling on in. Uh, with it, so we're, we're just just gone five past. I might go a bit earlier, just you know. So people in chat, how have people days been? People been having a bit of fun, you know. Hype for the hype to the finals of VDL. Of course, we have. Uh, I guess there's not really too much difference in the league this time around. It, it it's both just like, uh, both very similar. It's like, I guess it's more of like a comfort thing. <laughs> we hear me cheering it against Gumi. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. May may have a little bit of bias in that one. Yeah, but but we'll see. If, if Gumi takes it, at least I can say I lost in a different draft league to the winner of another one. So that that always helps. It's hear that word for it. It's also on chat knows the word where it's like, oh, I I I take the pride of someone else's victory because I lost to them and. Guess we've got to have some sort of pride in it. Uh, yeah. I was not very good at the whole general chit chat thing. I used to get good at that. That's something I I always fail at when I'm casting. I'm just kind of like, um, general chit chat. Do I think you beat them? Um, I don't know. Uh, looking at your team is quite cool. Like you got you got you got some some of the common Pokemon that you often see good in VG. Like you got your Sylveon, you got Rotom, you got Salamence, you got Gastrodon, the the good old good old Sluggo. Uh, Blaze Taurus you don't see as often, but I guess, you know, Taurus is Taurus. And uh, Don Fan is a nice thing that I have seen picking up in a few draft leagues, because it, it has a few good tools. Like, it has Ice Shard. That's really fun to see. I remember using I remember using it back in the day, in, like, oh, the early days, of, like, when I played singles and stuff, when I first started getting doubles. But Don Fan was always fun to use. It's a good ground type. It's not too fast, not too slow. I'm surprised I didn't pick it up in any other draft, in any draft league before, really. I think it's because I haven't seen it too often recently that I just kind of disregard it and underestimate what I can do, but we'll see. Anyway, so we're now just coming on to 10 past the hour, so I won't keep you guys waiting. You know, as much as it is nice to, to see me and hear me, we're just going to go over to hearing me. Hopefully the audio comes through from the computer. Um, we had a problem with this yesterday in another broadcast I did, but but we're here for the gameplay, not for the, well, not, not for the funky audio. So if I uh, quickly just transfer over there. We also are a lot so lucky. Thank you, Kev, for giving me this overlay to go off of because I'm bound, even though it's on the screen, to forget what's there. But uh, yeah, always nice to see it. So we'll jump straight on into that. So I was also turned out a little bit myself. I'm just gonna check it is coming through for you guys. Whilst we do that, yeah, it should be coming through for you guys. I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit more so I'm not completely swamped by the audio. So as we can see, we have from. Kev, we have the Salamence, the Sylveon, the Rotom, the Tauros, and Blaze, the Gactodon, and the Donphan. Unfortunately, you do lose a bit of style points there for having the pink Gastrodon. And then the other side of that, we have the Skullduck, so very fun. Another Sylveon, because of course this draft league did let you did have teams stacking over from divisions. The Roaring Moon, so past meeting present there in that regard. Vivion, which is always nice to see. You know, it did, had a couple of pickups in, in regular VTC play, and now it's coming into draft. Ramblegast to pair very, very well with Tailwind, possibly going for a few of those Pokemon, as well as maybe Heat Wave that could come from the other side of the field. So that Salamence could be carrying it, I believe. And then you have the ever so fun to use uh, Sandy Shocks, which is just a Pokemon that can be very threatening. You have Rain set up, you have Sun set up, you have, you know, it can attack in it. You want to, you have a type of strong into it. It can trastize into a few good types. I'm personally been testing a. Uh, a Terra Ice version in like normal VGC play because you get Bolt Beam, you get Earth, you get Earth, co Earth coverage, ground coverage with Earth power, and it, it's just a fun thing to use. So of course, in draft having all those tools is very, very good. Tried getting the green slug, but 
Yeah, the green it can sometimes be annoying getting the right slug with uh with how a lot of players are jumping to obtain their Pokemon. But we'll see how well the wins are obtained of both these players. As Sandy Shocks and Goldux aren't the least straight away, so that rain mode that I did mention could be coming initially with maybe manual rain on either Golduck or the Sandy Shocks, or going for gravity plus hydro pump, which could be fun to see in front of a Don Fan and a Rotom Wash. Of course, both of these Pokemon are looking very, very nice into what they're facing front of. Of course, you have electric type attacks for that Golduck, and you have a nice ground type attack for that Sandy Shocks. An earthquake next to this thing as we could, will be very, very powerful because Rotom does not care if it gets hit by an earthquake and of course that discharge you can also see on team preview there means that we could be a bit shaky if we just see Disquake popping off turn one sandy shocks can take a dis can take the discharge but Golduck ain't gonna like that especially if it's been ev trained to live something like a thunderbolt with that spread damage discharge we're doing roughly the same damage and also the earthquake will be supplementing that and probably get knock out i believe Golduck has a lower defense stat in comparison to a special defense you do see that Kev is taking their time to get the turn put in. Protect from Shandy Shocks, just covering as many different outcomes as possible. And then it's followed up by Protect from the Don Fan. So revealing speed tiers quite effectively there. Like we do Shandy Shocks is going to be faster. Hydro Pump comes on out, does go into that Protect though. So you never know if it's going to hit or if it's going to miss. And that's a little, little bit of the heartbreak you get when you use it. And Light Screen going to be saving the day for a short little while. As it is going to reduce the main offensive presence of both Pokemon on the pretzels side of the field and then it's like pretzels i knew that they're called they're called Degumi. i'm like I'll, I'll fluctuate as we come in into this next turn here so we'll see what our players want to go with are they going to want to go with something like a similar play is it going to be well i guess you can't go for the light screen again so it could just be outright damage from kev's side of the field there is the gravity so that hydro pump is definitely not going to be an issue for that side of the field and it's definitely going to be an issue though on the contrary for Kev as Hydro Pump comes on through Don Fan not known for being the bulkiest but does take a hit very nicely and here comes that discharge going to do nothing to two of the Pokemon on the field but Golduck even though it got its Hydro Pump off it is going to miss oh no it does actually survive so living on a similar side of HP as the Don Fan did Nerfquake comes on through knocks out the Golduck and just leaves the Sandy Shocks on a sliver giving it time to go for its own little thing in that ne in that next turn could maybe just go for enough power to finish off the don van could maybe reveal a, a terror blast and something if it's terror grass you can hit both of these pokemon and we'll take the moves from them quite comfortably too even though it's only on a sliver so it's a risky play could be what some players would consider a waste of that thrasization but it's draft you go all the way to the wall and you hope that the damage is beneficial <clears throat> oh there's a bit of pick packed a drink for this one but we should make it on through just having a little breather while the players put their moves in so already we can see all in terms of pokemon knocked out of course kev is on the front foot but with the roaring moon on the field and the sandy shocks pretty much doing its job of setting up the gravity and maybe getting a bit damaged out is completely done it does drop though to an ice shard so don fan removing something that was partially frightening i guess from the field in terms of the presence put out and here comes a Tailwind from the Roaring Moon, so that Tailwind Presence is going to be amazing. Um, for, I don't know if it does activate alongside Bramblegast, if it hasn't already, but it wasn't the field used. Discharge comes on through, does minimal damage to that Roaring Moon, just showing how bulky it can be with its Dragon Typing. And then does nothing to the Don Fan, and Sylveon coming in, and this is going to start screaming at these Pokemon. Putting the pressure down as hard and fast as possibly can, especially with that Tailwind. It itself is not the fastest Pokemon, however. But, you know, it's bulky enough that with a Tailwind plus its bulk, it's pretty much going to be taking advantage of any situation possible in that regard. Of course, smacking that damage is the best option. Disquake is going to be hitting both these Pokemon. Not going to be doing too much with Royal Moon as we have seen, but damage is damage in a situation like this, especially when you're trying to chip away at Tailwind turns. Transposition coming up though from the Sylveon. Sylveon going Terra Fairy, and this is going to be a dangerous situation. One of those Pokemon that you never really see going for an offensive Terra type, but here in our draft leagues, here in the VDL, we do not know what to go with there. Because, you know, you, you see something offensive, you know, you think, oh no, that damage can go down. You see something defensive, it's like, okay, I can maybe work around that, but just going straight out for that offense on such a weird Pokemon to go for an offensive Terra type. And with the damages on the field, you know, it doesn't matter where that terrestrialization was, it was going to be doing big damage. And Sylveon is going to clean up the Don Fan with a Hyper Voice as Rotom did drop just now to a breaking site. We'll see if there's any throat spray or anything. There is no throat spray activating, so revealing the item somewhat from that perspective. Another Sylveon will be coming in, but alongside that Salamence, who isn't going to like what damage you've thrown out, possibly forced into that terrestrialization just to have a little bit of longevity on the field.
So of course, Intimidate will be going off, not really doing anything to that Sylveon and not doing anything whatsoever either to the Roaring Moon with the reveal of the Clear Amulet. So again, on that back foot because you'd maybe Kev wanting to get that, that damage drop down and wanting to get that, that position where it's like, okay, you're doing less less damage. I can maybe take a couple of hits and give Sylveon that just a little bit more time to, to go around and throw damage down. But as we can see here, did not go too well. And now Kev is thrown into a corner where they're having to force that transportation to take over a fairy type or a dragon type attack. But at that same time, they are then forced to maybe go for the earthquake as the most powerful damage option available, which is going to be hitting into the Sylveon. But really, Sylveon could be bulky enough. It could maybe take it. If not, you're putting yourself in a threatening position. The translation is revealed. Corner has been backed into, but will it be a corner that can be backed out of quite easily? We'll have to see how much damage comes off from this earthquake. We did see it on team preview that it is a life orb Sylveon, so probably more inclined to go for its offensive stats, or maybe hasn't got much offensive at all to then put a lot more into its defenses through that life orb. Ironhead goes through, so you do see the speed tie is won by the opposing Sylveon and gets a big chunk of damage down, unfortunately knocking out Kev Sylveon and putting the Salamance in position where it's not going to be doing it, taking any more hits for any longer. As Earthquake comes on through, how much will we be seeing thrown down? It just misses a knockout on the Roaring Moon, and Sylveon just going to sit there comfortably, and quite shockingly, that knockout came through even the effect of Light Screen. So we have Gumi just sitting there comfortably, could just get that last knockout and breaking swipe. Even if it didn't knock out, you know, Sylveon would have cleaned up. There would have been the attack drop on the Salamence. So going into game two with a win in favor of Gumi, and the pretzels could be taking a win. So may maybe, maybe there is a bit of that luck, is a bit of that sod's law. I was like, oh, I lost to Gumi, so Gumi's Gumi has to win. Go you know, if Gumi wins, I'll feel a lot better about myself, but no bias, guys. We we've got no bias, remember? So I'll just quickly uh, break the illusion and skip on through to the next round. Don't mind me. Oh, nah, that's a bit too far ahead. Let's go to about, there we go. So yeah, break the illusion of uh, how I have this all set up, but what can I say? So we'll see what leads coming in from this game too. So of course both players have the ability to adapt in a little bit of time between hands. There's the Roaring Moon and Bramble Gas. So instantly seeing that ability to go for a Tailwind plus the boost on the Bramble Gas. And let me know, let me tell you, that is a threatening presence to be put in front of. As you see a Terra Fairy being clicked straight away on that Gashkon. Again, another translation you don't see all too common, but it is very beneficial in front of this Roaring Moon who can only really throw out a stab Go, uh, dragon type attack or stab dark type attack yes the iron head revealed last game could be a bit annoying because it's like oh no you know if i call this you know you're going to take damage the the, the terror types were revealed at the start of the game through the open open team sheets but it then comes down to that case of if you risk going for an iron head you can you can hit stones that water type but if you risk going for a dragon or a dark type move you risk going into that fairy type a protect coming off from both these players are just kind of just to say okay Let's see what our players want to go for. Let's read the room. Snarl coming out from the Roaring Moon, just covering any possible thing. Maybe thinking that Gastron could be a super, super offensive one. Let's not take any ice beams from, from it. As we see the foul play going into Bramogar. So two Dark attacks being thrown out. And two Dark attacks are very, very used to just being more of a supportive move. Being like, you know, I can control the field with what I, what I go with. Foul play puts a lot of pressure on those physical attackers, especially those that could be switching in. And Snarl is a kind of a bread and butter move. You can Snarl and get some some uh, focus sash broken. You can Snarl and jump special attack stat. You can Snarl and catch a switch in and get special attack stat. The only really drawback is if you see something with maybe Defiant in the back coming through. But we are not Defiant people on here to worry about. So Snarl... A very, very good play from Gumi and the Pretzel. Pushing Kev in position where we see a translation is being considered again. It will take even less damage from that Snarl. But is it really something considerable when you're just going to be taking that hit? You can be taking that drop anyway. And there's no Focus Sash we saw in Team Preview. But it's still that case of if you're, ta if you're taking that, that's a rolling wall of, of special attack drop, special attack, special attack drop. Yes, you can go with a Fairy type, but no Fairy type is going to save you from getting hit with those drops. It'll mitigate the time it'll take for the drops to take full effect in terms of damage. Tailwind though coming out, and that damage is going to be you know, shown even further as Wind Rider is going to boost Bramagard's attack as well as its speed. And reading perfectly into that chastisation, once you get rid of the Rotom who can maybe go for that foul play or set up screens later on, and quite obviously that's going to get knockout. Not revealing if it's something like those loaded dice or if it's any other boosting item, but getting a knockout clean and dandy. 
Rotom does go down. An Ice Beam coming on through, goes into the Roaring Moon, does a solid chunk. Would have done about 50% without that Snarl, most likely, but it's still a chunk indeed. And of course, luckily for Gumi, the Roaring Moon doesn't share that 4 times weakness to Ice types that is normally brought with its current friend in the Salamence. Dawn Fan coming in, though, is kind of liking the field. It's not going to like those super strong Grass type packs that are coming out. But it's going to be able to put a bit of pressure down, maybe go for an Ice Shard to get a decent bit of chip on. Maybe go for a Rock Slide, hopeless and Flinches. Earthquake, pretty much a null move right now, because you don't want to be hitting your Gashadon. Roaring Moon we know takes a, a, a smidge, like above a smidge. It takes a, a chunk, but it doesn't take enough to put pressure on it. And then being a Grass-type Bramblecast doesn't really mind getting hit by it. It'll take it, it'll, do that, it'll then continue. So Gumi taking that very good front foot straight away was, again... For, as we saw in game one and really putting that pressure where kev backed into a bit of a corner has the tools to get through it like you could see a double up into one of these pokemon both being weak to ice or you could just see player thing here which is the protect saving don fan for a little bit of a later turn the snarl does come through gonna reduce the gash dust attack even more should it hit and unfortunately it does hit and we see a bit of a chip six damage but that's not a thing that we're seeing from gumi we're seeing gumi control the field and get those drops bullet seed going into the don fan so another good call there from Kev, and then Yawn coming out from Gashadon, gonna put a bit of a timer onto the Bramblegast and make sure that, yeah, you're doing damage to me, and I can kind of switch around this, but now I've got to force you to start switching around, because I have my Protects, I have my Switches, and all you really have now is an offensive presence, it's a Roaring Moon, who isn't enjoying taking as many hits as it should be, even with those Snarls, but you see the possible double up going in, possibly trying to call Will the Bramble Gas be switching? Will it be protecting? If it protects, it goes to sleep. If it switches, you know, it, do, it isn't doing much. There's the Ice Shard doing a nice bit of damage, possibly putting it into that, that Ice Beam Rage. Iron Head does about 50% to the Gashadon. Bullet Seed coming out isn't going to Don Fan, and Don Fan not enjoying this. Look at the size of that damage just on that first hit. Second hit alone does enough, and the third one is. Oh, no. Nope. Never mind, but four is the lucky number here for Gumi and the Pretzels. Bremagast getting another clean knockout, showing how powerful it can be with that Tailwind. Mm. And we'll see what Ice Beam does, but it doesn't do anything as there's the flinch. So Gumi probably rubbing their knuckles right now, getting super happy. Another turn survived, thanks to everyone's favorite friend in VGC, the good old flinch. <laughs> oh, sorry, pardon me. So Silver and coming out, and now it's two fairy types in front of a dragon type, but that same dragon type has a nice strong steel type move, and you can't keep dodging them forever. You can maybe yawn to Burba Pressure and Roaring Moon, but with four Pokemon down against two, you pretty much have that ability to switch, to dodge those yawns, you have the ability to throw damage down. You can do anything, Gumi, and you will be happy and dandy. Of course, Kev can maybe get some high rolls, can maybe call those protects the switches very, very well. Work around that. Hyper Voice hitting both slots is also very beneficial because you know you you get damage on anything regardless if it switches or it protects. If it does X Y Z, Ironhead coming out doing a big chunk to the Sylveon. Gramagar staying asleep. Let me see if there's any flinches this turn. Don't want to have the commentator's curse, but sometimes you want to bring it up for the benefit of doubt. Roy Moon goes down. Bramagast goes down to a nice bit of HP. This could be a range of an Ice Beam. We'll have to see. Can Kev reclaim the position? Ice Beam coming on through. It's got a couple of drops on it, and it does grab the knockout. So Bramagast going down as well. Two some healthy Pokemon here for Kev, but then two fully healthy Pokemon will be coming in on the side of the of Gumi and the Pretzels. Gastron getting back into the green. Thanks to his leftovers. Tailwind is gone as well. These two aren't the fastest, but they're also not the slowest. Gashadon, not normally known to be a speedster, it is a slog, but, you know, we've all seen that movie Turbo, maybe we could have a bit of luck there. Sandy Shot's coming in as well, it's, you know, now that Gashadon's lost its electric immunity, it is going to be a lot more beneficial for it, as it can just start going for those Thunderbolts. We could see a sneaky trick like a, like a Gravity Plus Hyper Beam from Sylveon, just to completely obliterate something on the other side of the field. But then it comes down to that case of, is there going to be the obliterating effect, or is there going to be... Or they're just going to be playing it safe, going for a Hyper Voice. Here's a Trastalization. Gumi, once again, saving that Terra type for the end. Going on that Sylveon. We've seen how much Terra Fairy Hyper Voice can do. 
and it is going to do loads and loads again. We'll come down to possible speed tides if they are existent in this matchup. But uh, as we see, a protect those that speed time not going to be found out. Damage roll not going to be found out quite yet either. Sunny shots going for Earth Power. Goes into the Gastrodon. It lives in the red. But there's not going to be anything as this Hyper Voice is just going to clean up a Terra Fairy. Knocking out a Terra Fairy. And he's putting the game in a clean position for the Goomies. For the for the Goomies? For Goomy and the Pretzels. I just see G's in the chat over here from my side. So you can see the, the Pretzels alongside their coach, Goomy is one button press away from taking this finals in VDLS division and there it is ladies gentlemen boys and girls the final knockout of this season of VDLS and Gumi's has taken the pretzels through to a lovely win cleaning up in a nice swift 2-0 and just calling it a day really a very I guess it wasn't wasn't overly swift it wasn't the it wasn't like a complete demolition derby but it, it was still still a big chunk for, still a big chunk being thrown down either side and I'm looking at things either side and there's a side of this matchup on VDL V that I'm really liking so I'll quickly uh, I'm liking all of it actually Oof, especially the player player POV if, if, the, if the, the if the POV that I'm watching wins I'll be very happy because one of my favorite Pokemon that I was considering drafting this uh, this uh, this year in VDL is in the finals and I'm just saying, I could have got to the finals if I, if I was I was in VDLV, but I uh I was down and out uh by the last week of playoffs it was it was annoying, but I wasn't really having my day with that draft league. So let's see if these players who are using it do have their day to quickly switch on over and again ruin the illusion with that YouTube thing coming up at the bottom there. So as we can see, and there's gonna be lag, and I've got to turn that down. I'll turn that myself. Oh, three. There we go. So. As we can see on this side of the field, we have the, that's a Spupa, Spupa, Fluttermane, Glamora, Torkoal, Hydreigon, and Tauros. And then along on the other side from Tyler, we have uh, Forgeous, Dragonite, Electros, Klefki, Bishop, and the Skeledurge. So nice teams from either side. We have the Suns, sort of like sun reliant team very similar to what i drafted in uga this year uh from a player perspective who i am gonna feel horrible if i forget their name i'll probably see it when we when we go on through one of you guys in chat can remind me but yeah it's just a very strong team it's got your sun mode it's got high dragon amazing torkoal an amazing pokemon especially with that mirror herb and then you know spupa loving it friend guard rage powder one of the few put like if you, if you can't if you can't get mouse hold just grab spupa because it, it's Vivion with, it, it's Vivion that's like slightly less bulky, but you get even, even, even like access. And you're not four times weak to rock. Still a bug type. Still pretty futile, but you know, it could show its face, could get some times in. Bisharp coming alongside Klefki, of course. Bisharp got itself some new toys this generation of being able to hold the Eevee Light. So not forcing to go for that Assault Vest and can still get that massive boost to its bulk, whilst also be able to go things like source darts for maybe a home force or anything as a slight and throw down lots and lots of damage. Fluttermane though, we already know from watching regular VGC, watching all those regionals, all those premier challenges, everything in the books, we know how much this Fluttermane can do just in the short term. With Torkoal by its side, it's gonna be pretty pretty swaggy. It doesn't need to have doesn't have to hold anything for that boost for energy. And can just go straight away for that Protosynthesis boost. We see a Protect coming out, just controlling the field though, making sure we can kind of read what's going on. So if we see anything like a Sword Stance, that can be reading the field very, very greatly. Metal Sound coming from Clefie, something you don't see very often. Dropping the Special Defense, so not beneficial right now to what we see on that side of the field, but is very beneficial to forcing that switch out super early on. So maybe reading it into the Jet Pack, maybe watching some reads, being like, I oh, saw so what Joe US Nairo is using. I'm gonna see if you'll be running that too. And just making sure Torkoal was gone in turn one. The sun is already up, which is annoying, but now we just see some we see the friend guard coming up through with that Spupa. I wanna see Spupa putting down some action. I wanna see Spupa getting those knockouts. You know, I, you know Flutter is a bluff. Flying's a bluff. Spupa is the MVP. Even says in the team name, Spupa MVP. 
Oh, as that is the Rage Powder. So we're going to see how bulky this thing can be in the face of a pretty, pretty strong Pokemon. Moonblast coming out. Going to go into that Bisharp. Gets it to about 50%. Will it be a special attack job? There is not one. So not very favorable in, uh, for the opponents on the field. As you've taken the damage, but not, the, not gotten that buff from Defiant. But an Iron does not nothing, but it's a comfortable amount you can maybe see it taking. As you see, the dispute performance move pool is pretty much forced into two moves as Bishop on the field. So, you've done your jobs in my book. You redirected, you let Fluttermane get a move off, and you can sit there comfortably in your, in your little cloth with all the little, little squares on any little thing. Could even go for a, for the same play over and over again, just redirect attacks, making sure that we can see damage count from Fluttermane. Bishop is being switched out though, so not wanting to risk, you know, the high risk high reward of if you can get me for with Moonblast, I can take a low roll, but get the Defiant drop as well. Uh, and yeah, Rage Powder coming on through again, that lovely little animation coming in from this lovely little bug. Moonblast goes on through, goes to the floor, just takes a chunk from it, no special attack drop there, and floor just can sit happily because that thing is very, very bulky, and another hit taken by the Spute Burt, so he's going to sit down for that one more turn. And one more turn only, most likely. But that is still a redirection for that one turn. We could just see double Dazzling Gleam, which is going to be dangerous for these Pokemon. Because Vlogius is very, very strong. It's like a fairy type special attacking Kartana. It's got no stats anywhere besides like its HP and its special attack. And if you you can just ride with like four modest, and that is going to pop off. You can see our first characterization of the VDLV finals. What will it be? It will be the Florigus going for a station, going into the... I was going this one. I believe that's rock. Yeah, that's rock type prioritization. So, it's it's not going to be overly mitigated in terms of like, what well, damage throwing in front of from the fairy type attacks, but still can hit nicely. As there's the Sandstorm, an amazing play there from Isla on the opposing side, giving the buff to... To the floor just in special defense, dropping the special attack in or well, the stat boost indirectly from the Pro Simpsis, putting up sand for chip damage, everything happening in one turn now. So an amazing play. Dancing Gleam it does not do much to the flutter, but it's gonna be bye-bye to Spupa. Normally saying bye-bye brother free, but bye-bye to this regional bug Pokemon. You've done your job. I salute you, small little sir. And now it's coming down to the fact where Torkov can come back in and can and can just reset that sun, get Pro Simpsis up. But, again in these mind games, playing each other tit for tat, we have a rock type coming in, in Sandstorm, for our player over here. So it's going to be a case of, oh no, you got your Sandstorm up to get a special defense boost, I'm going to get some as well, and Glamora is already very bulky. It's already, you know, enjoying taking these hits. Often you see Assault Vepper we saw from that preview there, this one is going to be the Choice Specs variant, and with Choice Specs, you know, it's not going to bother about the defense boost. Now it's looking sitting in front of a rock type floor. Just it can go. Oh hi! There's a steel type. There's a rock type. There's a terra ground. I'm just now seeing. So this is going to be a lot of damage into either of these Pokemon. Floor just might take a little bit better because you know it's already got a nice bit of bulk. But you know maybe that's the problem. Clefki only throwing minuscule dazzling gleams out. The transformation was the option that was gone for. Gamora with us now, the special defense boost, the specs boost, the stab boost, this earth power is going to be a very, very nice hit and could be goodbye to the floor just as well. Fluttermane goes for protect, just wanted to see who's throwing damage down at me, what are the options that are coming for. Thunder Wave coming on out. Miss doesn't affect Glamora because it's a ground type, so amazing double play there, making sure there's no paralysis and getting that buff. You do lose special defense boost. Floor just hangs on because of the same special defense boost and Dazzling Gleam. Not gonna be going through, but due to losing its poison type, Glamora is still gonna take a nice chunk and it has lost that special defense boost as well. So taking a bit as well. Fluttermane taking that chip from the sand. Glamora luckily not taking it because of its ground typing. So that's another nice benefit to immunity you gain. Let's see Thunder Wave coming out. Going to the Flutter Main, it's already done and dusted with how low HP it is. Was a threat with how fast it is, but it's going to be a, put in a position where it could not attack and you're just not going to get down there anyway. Earth Power going to Klefki, living on a sliver. We'll be seeing a Focus Slash being revealed. That is a Focus Slash, so not all the luck coming out from Tyler, but still just enough to control the field. Fluttermane dropping as it is now slower than that Fulgis. And this, this, the, 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 
Get away ahead of myself here. The Sandstorm won't ship any of these Pokemon and there won't be any more because Torkoal coming on in. Klefki just has the ability to go for Prank or Sandstorm again. Go to special defense boost, but honestly, it's in a position where both these Pokemon are super low anyway. We know Torkoal, well, we know obviously Torkoal is carrying his body press. The opponent doesn't know it, but he could know. Oh, you can still carry it. So, it's going to be a case of maybe just letting both these Pokemon drop. Both these Pokemon. Uh, you know, both these Pokemon get a free switch, and then you get you get a nice healthy two versus two. Torkoal being a max HP isn't really much of how slow it is, and the Glamora, you know, it's done its job. It's gotten its damage down. You can start threatening that, and Torkoal will be done and dusted. You know, they say the the turtle beats the hair, but I think the hair's going to be in the turtle situation. Klefki just paralyzing that Torkoal just in case of some sort of cheeky timid max speed variant. Also controlling the field, just making sure it is gone and dusted. Earth power going on through into into the floor just so floor just finally thwarted and finally removed, but just giving way for a very very healthy Pokemon to come on through. And maybe not even have to rely on the sandstorm should it be set up. As you see, Torkoal goes to that body press, get rid of the Klefki. So doubly the same for that slot there. Tyler, bring in your last two Pokemon. Show us what you're throwing down for this end game. But can we see Klopsis? Colopsia, Col sorry, uh, taking the reins and going through. Bishop coming in. Bishop can maybe suck a punch for a bit of damage down. Dragonite coming through can maybe put a bit of pressure on. You can start going for things like extreme speeds. You can start throwing down those strong dragon type attacks. But will it be enough? These Pokemon, both of them are being fairly bulky. This course taking a bit of damage. Sucker Punch coming out through. Does get a knockout on the Glamora though, so maybe inclined to go more of an offensive set. There's those toxic spikes that you often see from its toxic debris ability, but it's too late in the game. Glamora, wake up a little bit. You're gone down. You don't need your spikes. You know, a nice little bit of constellation, but but we're here. Dragonite coming through. Jumping out Stumbly Tangent. I'm feeling it has a super effective move for this Torkoal, and Torkoal gets great as well. Is it going to be fully powered? No fully power there, so. Sometimes I beg for that commentator's curse, but it's, it, it wasn't there, luck, luckily, I guess. And then players are just in a situation where we get to see another Sucker Punch for Stopping Tantrum, and that will be game in favor of Tyler. So showing that you don't have to all these big, strong, fancy dancy, sun boosted paradox mon. You can just go ahead with something simple. Ooh, but Torkoal lives on that sliver, but it's paralyzed as well. Everything is coming up. Millhouse on Tyler's side of the field. You are a sucker punch. You are a brick break. You are, you are anything. You are a sneeze away from knocking out this Torkoal. And Klopsia just realizing that maybe not the best situation to be in. Just start spamming that yawn button. Getting things through and letting it go through to the next game. So well done Tyler. Getting that game one. Getting control of the best of three and early on and showing how powerful your combos can be. You have revealed the text straight away, so now Klops is going to have to be on their toes, but it's not going to be the end of the world in that case. So we'll just, you know, break the illusion there, go through a little bit, and we'll see what our players are bringing for this game too. Will Klops here want to bring something different? Will, it, will they maybe read in, oh, the Sandstorm mode is there, force that Sandstorm, but keep Dog all safe. There's Klefki Dragonite, very, very similar to what we've seen many, many... Time to fall in regular VGC, you just use Klefki to set the field, produce the play, and then benefit the wider audience. We do see revealed to... Oh, pardon me. Oh. Do see revealed the Dragonite is not in a focus, and did drop, have that Intimidate affect it directly. And we saw a couple of cheeky tech moves on that Tauros set. But with the MVP, the bug himself, Scooper, hovering about, it should be it should be fine to take a couple of hits itself, maybe do a big redirection. I do believe that's a ter Terra Electric we're seeing from the little yellow particles around around the terrestrialization button. So I can go for a stab, wild charge into the Dragonite should it want to, or should it want to control the field. And Pupa is a bit confusing what to go for. Goes to that Rage Heart at the end just to take as many hits as possible. I love the noise, I love the face. He is just so lovely. Metal Sound coming up out, going into that slot there. So maybe we're feeling that it's a mixed attacking variant of the Dragonite, all just relying heavily on that Metal Sound from the from the um, Chefki to drop the special attack stats. Dragonite revealing that it's a fairly, fairly bulky variant. You know, even with that, that, that multi-scale, expected to do a little bit more, but we're here now. I did see attack get avoid. I was a... 
was a bit ahead of myself, but something was avoided. So now Spupa, sitting quite comfortably, can keep going for his redirections, can maybe go for a string stop to drop some speeds. Clefty not going to be overly bothered because it's got that prankster. The dancing gleams aren't going to be coming out as fast, but it's still got a way of just going for something like the metal sound, producing special special defense stats, and just keep the ball rolling, rolling, rolling. Oh, and then see we from a from the Tauros here, giving it a bit of wiggle room, seeing what's coming into from that slot there. Air slash coming through, so revealing it is a mixed attacking variant on that Dragonite. Let's see what else comes through. Dazzling Gleam from the Clef Key is going to go into this weakened Spewfer, but is the power of friendship, the power of the MVP, going to keep it through? The Eevee Light does keep it going. And Struggle Bug revealed to reduce the fact that's further. That was minimal bits of a damage done to that Clef Key. But again, we had, as we saw in that game from VDL S. It's just a case of, it doesn't matter what damage you're doing, it's what effect you're doing. And getting that special defect, that special attack drop is going to be beneficial. One of these Pokemon in the back, maybe not the High Dragon, because that's going to not enjoy taking a Dazzling Gleam, even from a Clef Key. But Glamora continues to hit a little bit better. It's not going to be happy if it sees a stomping tantrum going into that slot, but at the end of the day, it's that, it's that high risk, high reward you play with switching in something with Glamora or just bring it in naturally anyway. Because these plays have been picked to protect from our little MVP bug, the Spupa, making sure that it's staying around a little bit longer, scouting up moves going to that slot, the Metal Sound goes straight into the Tauros. Are we going to see a nice lovely combo of Metal Sound plus Air Slash? There is the Air Slash, and that just lives on a sliver, and a Raging Ball comes on through it's that Water Type, and goes into Klefki, does a massive chunk of damage. Unfortunately, no screens to be broken but still some pressure to be exerted. And now in a situation where we can see something like a Rage Powder to redirect, get that Tauros one more turn to work around with and maybe get the final knockout on the Clef Key. Or maybe throw a bit of damage down to that Dragonite with that Wild Charge again. And seeing it as more scale is broken, it can maybe be a bit of a bad news bear situation. Push it down to its limits, and then maybe the Hydro to come in and get a nice little knockout. Of course, you can't paralyze the Hydro when it's slower to relying sheerly on Dragonite speed, but there is a protect, and there is the air slash coming through. So, an amazing that protect, not going for the Spewper, thinking it's not that big of a threat. You see Dazzling Gleam coming through. It did do a lot to Spewper earlier, thanks to the defense drop. So, Spewper probably going down, probably saying goodbye to us. So, you've done your job. You've got that one drop that could have been the saving grace in that air slash play. But we'll have to see nonetheless. It's really High Dragon coming back on. Well, so coming back in, coming in, and giving its fate, its free faces time to shine. It might be faster than this Dragonite. As I said, it can't be paralyzed. And it's now in that case where it can drop a Draco. It can go with Focus Energy to make sure those Dracos are definitely not affecting it. We do see Heat Wave could be an option. Could burn the Dragonite, which gives a little bit of a better situation for that Clef for the Glamora with making something tantrum weaker and Hydragon beat tape will probably eat those those air slashes up. Mine well no it's not even metal sound so Hydragon amazing switch up here. You can't Klefki can't do anything to it besides dazzling gleam. And you can knock it out before it attacks you that is fine. Air slash going into what was the Tauros Glamora taking it amazingly. Klefki revealed to be faster than Hydragon. Hydragon goes down to about 60% for Spuper saving the day even from its grave and keep it gets a knockout of Klefki. Does mean no dash of Dragonite, but we could still see that burn coming through and putting a bit of pressure down. No burn, okay. So even without the even without the burn, you can start going for Draco Meteors. You probably are inclined to go for the Terrasquization on the Glamora, especially now you see that Bishop. Bishop isn't gonna like taking a specs boost to Terrasquization boosted Earth Power. And also you can take the stomp attachment a lot better than before. We can see though that Popsia is opting to maybe not go for that, maybe thinking that sheer damage is going to be a threat onto both these Pokemon. Heat Wave is going to do a lot into the Bisharp in terms of base damage. The UV Light on its side might save it. But we'll have to see. Could also be revealing that maybe it is a, a sheerly bulky one. Maybe they did some calcs of Struggle Bug into Dazzling Gleam from that Clefki. Not something you see very often, but it's still often enough in draft leagues that you'd want to maybe consider it. The seconds are ticking down on these final couple of turns. Flopsia really wanting to make the best of this turn possible. Gets that protecting on the last second. So it's maybe reading the field, seeing what is the best option. There's a nice and dandy protect. What are the players going for? There's the Psycho Punch going into the Gamora. Is there some of those spikes, but will it be mattered in this late game? Going into the Gala HP, 
Stomping Tantrum has been already revealed in that game on Air Slash though. So maybe revealing that it is locked into that, maybe Choice Locked, or maybe just thinking that the best option possible, Earth Power coming on through into that Bishop and does get a clean one hit KO with a critical hit. So we do not know that role mattered, but maybe both these players do know if it mattered very, very much. And now the position has kind of been pivoted back into a favor where both these players enjoy it. Floor just can take advantage of this field, even just click Dazzle and Gleam, it's been poisoned, but what is that poison? You know, you're now in a position where if you stay with that poison typing, you take less damage from the Dazzle and Gleam that's coming your way, or Moonblast or whatever damage is coming out from this floor just, but at the same time, you then become, you then stay weak to the Dragonite, but if you then go for that Trasterization, who are you benefiting there? You then become weak to your, weak to the floor just, but not to the Dragonite, as we just see Tyler has said here in chat, that um uh the, the crit mad and it is choice scarf there so it was choice locked just want to double check out so i think he went choice banned into this onto a next set so there is the air slash going through hydragon just taking that but could still flinch but it's not gonna flinch it's gonna be a sturdy little soldier dragonite dropping to a draco and now we can see a situation where we could just see a nice little dazzling gleam getting knockout on both of these Pokemon. There's a psychic though, so calling, you know, maybe, I, I guess it wasn't really a switch being called, is it? It was, it was gonna take super effectiveness, so, uh, Tauros going down, and the poison ticking on the floor just. So now we're in a situation where we know the Hydreigon is faster, it can't switch reset its stats, it can't really afford to go for that Draco Meteor in front of a fairy type, and for more of its, with its choice specs, can start throwing a nice strong start on down. Opting to maybe go for that Trastalization though, a bit of a risky move given, uh, I guess you've revealed the Psychic and try and can bait that Psychic, but at the same time, you know, could you see a reading to this and think, okay, you've got to go for that Terror, then I'm going to Moonblast you, I'm going to Dazzling Gleam you, and that's gonna do a nice chunk of damage. Clops here, having to think this one through, every tool is in the kit right now, but it's the right one gonna be picked to fix this issue. As you see, maybe a focus energy player. I believe that was a hover on the focus energy. Here's a trastization. So you're just going to try and go for that rock type to take these poison type attacks even better. So I do. Oh no, sorry. No, that was a terror type on the side for the Gamora. I, I got my Pokemon on team for you there, but still that trastization is happening. Will we see a terror type from Gamora? No, we're not. Acid spray does damage, but it is dropping a special attack stat. A little bit more focus energy coming up for the Hydreigon. Is this an amazing call by Klops here? Is this going to be a pumped up Hydreigon? It's taking a nice hit. Ah! Dazzling Gleam does come out. A sliver for Glamora, but is that sliver going to be enough? You are now weak to those fairy type moves. So a good call on Klops here's behalf. Trying to think, okay, am I going to am I going to take a Psychic? Am I going to take a Moonblast? And you go for that high risk, high reward. You you maybe try and force those plays. As you see a translation coming on through though losing the fairy typing, gaining that rock typing. So Tyler is in that situation where you have to hope that there's no crits, no high rolls, no nothing, that this special defense drop isn't going to be too impactful, isn't going to be the end of the world. Let's see what it is. Acid Spray goes on through, does a nice little chunk of roughly about the same, if not a sliver more than last time, but unfortunately not enough with Dazzling Gleam comes on through and knocks out the Glamora and claims the game for Tyler meaning that both times we've seen the opposing player from the player's perspective get that win. But congratulations, Tyler, you are this season's VDLV champion with a very, very funky flow of play. And you know, a little bit of a teaser there. There's what Google throws at you when you finish a video. But yeah, other than that, thank you very much to everyone who turned up. And thank you for those of us who saw us crowning our new champions. Uh, and yeah, so I get thanks for supporting the stream as well, and thanks to everyone for supporting VDL. It's always really been fun. It's been a very, very welcoming community to be part of. Never had any hiccups or issues with the league, with the players. So, you know, always a good vibe. Always happy to be here to provide this last little tidbit, uh, just to you know bring a bit of life to the finals, bring a bit of like, I guess, outsider input. Because sometimes it's nice to get a bit of the the extra additions to it. Because you know, sometimes you get a bit. Yeah, you know, maybe a bit quiet or a bit shaky in our matches because of all the hacks and all the other wrongdoings that can happen. But anyway, my throat is hurting and my nose is starting to get blocked because it is hay fever season over here. So I am going to leave you all with a fine and dandy goodbye and hopefully see most of you in the next season. I might try out for VDLS again next season. VDLV was not for me, I don't think. I'm there quite there yet, but 
you know, maybe some new people in chat can start seeing it. And hopefully it is a pathway to your draft league dreams. So again, thank you everyone who turned up. Have a very good night, morning, day, work shift, lunch break, whatever sort of time it is for you. And I'll hopefully see you, you know, in about a year's time, few months time for the next season.